Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this class. In this video, I'm going to talk about the principles of passing of property in the sale of goods law. How property is passed and by passing of property, we are talking about legal ownership. So in this video, we are going to look at how does legal ownership transfer from one person to another. The key thing you need to know under the sale of goods law is that the person who bears the loss when there is any risk, any damage that has happened, the person who bears the loss is the person who has the property. So the passing of property is the most important aspect in sale of goods law because it explains who has the right to sue. And by passing of property, we are talking about passing of legal ownership. So this video is principally going to talk about how property passes or how legal ownership passes from one person to another. So the meaning of passing of property, like I said, is really passing of legal ownership. So transferring legal ownership, transferring the right to sue, the right to enjoy the product, the legal ownership. For example, you can have a car and you're the legal owner of the car, but you could also just be someone who's borrowed the car. So if you've borrowed the car, you don't have legal ownership of the car. You just have possession of the car. In the same way, Property in goods is different from possession of goods. You could be in possession of the goods, but when you don't have the legal ownership of the goods. So it is always important to distinguish between possession of the goods and property of the goods. And by property, we are saying you must have legal ownership of the goods. Not just possession of the goods that the goods are in your possession, but you must have legal ownership of the goods. So a seller can have possession of the goods, the goods can be in their store, but when they've already sold them, so because they've already sold them, they don't have legal ownership anymore. In other words, property in those goods had re have already passed to someone else. Okay? So you can have possession, but not property in the goods. And the goal of every transaction is that you must ensure that you get the legal ownership of the goods. So what is the relevance of passing property? What is the relevance of this doctrine? Passing property is important because it establishes who bears the risk and therefore who bears the loss in the event of damage. Let's assume there's a contract between you and me. You have agreed to sell to me your bins and you actually send the bins to me, but I've not finished paying up and you still have the logbook. The law says that in that case, property has not passed to me because you still have the legal ownership, you still have the logbook. And until I finish paying up and you give me the logbook, then will I become the owner and will I have the legal ownership of the bins? So if at the point before you send to me the logbook, before I fully have the property in the goods, it is knocked down and written off the road. The law says that you who has the logbook, you're the one to bear the loss because you still have legal ownership in the goods. In other words, property had not passed to me. So passing of property in law establishes who bears the risk. Goods remain at the seller's risk until the property in the goods passes to the buyer. And when the property or when the legal ownership passes to the buyer, then the goods become the legal responsibility of the, of the buyer. So the law says that whoever has property is a person who bears the loss for risk that are, that, that bears the risk and the loss for the damage of those goods. That's why we say that when property passes to the buyer, the goods become the buyer's property and the buyer's risk. Because if there is damage, then it is the buyer to people that damage. So the effect of passing properties, like I've said, number one, it determines who bears the risk of the property and therefore the loss when damage happens. And then number two, it gives someone the right to sue. Whoever has property has right to sue. So having property determines who has the right to sue a third party for damage that arises to the goods. In other words, if you're not the legal owner of the Mercedes Benz, you cannot sue someone who's knocked you down. Because you're not the owner, you're not the owner of the car, you don't have the legal ownership. Only the person in whom property in goods rests has the right to sue or take action against a third party. And the seller's right to sue for price only arises after property in those goods has passed to the buyer. So the seller cannot sue when he still has property in the goods because it means in law those goods still belong to him. You can only sue when you have the right or the property in the goods. So if the seller becomes insolvent 
or if the seller is sued for failure to pay their money and the goods were still in the possession and the property was still in the hands of the seller, okay, and the seller is insolvent, that means that property has not yet passed to the buyer because property is still in the hands of the seller. So no one can claim those goods, whoever belongs to the buyer cannot come and claim those, those goods from the seller because the property in the goods had not passed from the seller. So in this slide, we are talking about the rules that govern transfer of property. In other words, how do you know whether property has passed or not? Or what does the law say amounts to passing property or not? And the general position is that once goods are ascertained or specific, then property in those goods passes to the buyer at the time the parties agree. What do we mean by specific goods? We mean that good has been identified, earmarked, picked out and set apart. For example, it says that this bottle is set apart. This is what we are dealing with. It's clearly ascertained and specific. So the law says that in such instances, those kind of goods, property in those goods passes to the buyer at the time the parties have agreed that it should pass. And how do they determine the intention of the parties? They look at the terms of the contract. How are the parties conducting themselves? What are the circumstances of the case? So we are saying that property in specific or ascertained goods is transferred at that time that the party is intended to pass. If they agree that it passes today, then property will pass today. If they agree that it passes tomorrow, then property will pass tomorrow. So it depends on what the parties agree to it, what the parties agree to the time to which the property should pass. If, however, the goods are in a deliverable state, in a state whereby they are ready to go, then property passes at that time. But there are situations where goods are not in a deliverable state. That is, something still has to be done to those goods for them to be ready to go. The law says that property in those goods passes once that thing is ready. Let's read this case of Castell versus Timber Operations. So in this case, the plaintiff sold to the defendant, the plaintiff Castell sold to the timber guys all the trees in a forest which conformed to a certain measurement on a particular date. So they went and agreed that all the trees in this forest, we've sold them to you. And they said, we'll sell them. You make sure you cut them down by this date. So the buyer were given 10 years within which to cut down the trees and remove the timber. Almost immediately afterwards, the Lativan parliament passed a law confiscating the forest. So the forest was not to be touched anymore. And these guys had already made the contract that you take all these trees within the next 10 years. Now you find that these trees were not in a deliverable state. In other words, they were not in a state that the logs had been cut out, been set apart, been earmarked for the contract. In other words, they were unspecific or unascertained. Okay? What did court say? The issue was whether these goods had been ascertained or identified to the contract. Court held that the property in the trees had not passed to the defendants as the goods were not sufficiently identified since not all the trees were to be cut and not all the trees conformed to the measurements they were looking for. The timber was not in a deliverable state until the purchasers had severed it or they had cut it down. Therefore, the property in the timber was not at the risk of the purchasers. Hmm? So we are saying in this case that if goods are not in a deliverable state, they are not in a state whereby they have been earmarked and set apart. The law says that those kinds of goods, property in those goods does not pass until those goods have been earmarked and set apart and put in a deliverable state. So in other words, in this case, property could not pass to the buyers because the trees had not yet been cut and put into logs and put apart as the contract had required. And there were some trees in the forest that were not even going to be cut. So in such a case, the damage that arose or whoever bore the loss for the parliamentary law of confiscating the, the forest was the person who had the property. And in that case, it was the seller because the goods had not yet been put in a deliverable state. So on the other hand, if goods are not in a deliverable state or a state that is ready to go, and something still has to be done to put those goods into a deliverable state. 
property in those goods does not pass until after that thing that is supposed to be done is done. Let's look at this case of Underwood. Underwood versus Bar Castle Brick and Cement. The plaintiff, Underwood, sold a condensing engine to the defendants. Think about this engine like a cooling engine, a cooler for their brick processes. So he sold this engine to the brick guys. The engine weighed over 30 tons and it was cemented to the floor. Okay, it had first been dismantled and then after they are detaching it from the floor. In other words, they had first remove it and unscrew it from the floor and then dismantle it for that for the engine to be packed and sent to the buyer. And this task was expected to take about two weeks and to cost about a hundred pounds. Now, while they were putting this engine on the truck, the accelerators accidentally damaged it and the buyers refused to accept it. So the point of damage happens after they have dismantled this machine and they're putting it on the truck. And the question is, had property passed for this contract? What did court say? Court said that the engine, at the time they did the contract, the engine was not in a deliverable state. At the time the contract was made, the engine still had so many things to be done to it. They had first unscrew it, then they had to disassemble it. So in other words, property did not pass at the time the contract was made because the goods were not in a deliverable state. So here we are saying that court held that the engine was not in a deliverable state and property had not passed when the contract was made. The plaintiff still had to do something to the engine, which they had not done for purposes of putting the engine into a deliverable state. So in other words, if a seller has to do something for putting that item into a deliverable state, property does not pass until what they're supposed to be done is done and the buyer has been given notice of it. So for this engine to fall apart at the point of loading, at that point not everything had been finished and the buyer had not been notified. So property did not pass at the time of the contract. At that point property was still in the hands of the seller because the, co the goods or the engine, they still had so much to do to put it in a deliverable state. Now, in a situation whereby something still has to be done to determine the price of the deal, the law says that property in those goods does not pass until what is supposed to be done is done and the price is established. So if you look at this case of Zagari versus Fanel, a seller sold bales of goat skin. Think of these goat skin bales as indie water. You know, they sell these indie water of goat skin and the price to be paid was to be ascertained or determined from the number of dozens in the bell sold. So the bell is a big thing and they have to ascertain how many dozens of goat skin are this are inside this in the water. Okay? So the price was not established. The price was going to be established after they had found out how many dozens are, are in this bell. Now it was the duty of the seller to count the number of dozens of goat skins in each bell. Before he could do so, the bells were destroyed by fire. In other words, before they established the price and what, before the deal was concluded, the bells caught fire. And the question is, who is to bear that loss? Is it the seller or the buyer? What did court say? Court said that the property in the goods had not passed to the buyer. Because the buyer, the seller still had something to do to establish the price. In other words, the deal had not been finished or closed. And therefore, because they had not yet ascertained the price, property had not yet passed. It was still in the hands of the seller. So the law says that if there is still anything that needs to be done, whether that thing is selling the price or packing the things well or dismantling the thing anything that still has to be done property does not pass until after all that is done and the buyer is notified of that completion now where goods are to be sold on an approval or sale return we're saying property does not pass until that approval or return is done Let's assume, usually abroad, if you go to shops in the United States, for example, they'll tell you that, oh, you can buy these clothes, but you have 30 days within which to return them. If you return them within 30 days, we'll take them. After 30 days, we'll deem that you have taken the clothes or you've, you've, you've bought them. So in other words, it's a sale or return. It's deemed to be a sale within the 30 days. If not, you return it. So the law says that once it's a sale or return, and you're silent and the period lapses. Property does not pass until that period lapses. If you look at this case of Elphick versus Burns, the sellers of a horse delivered it to the buyer on the terms 
sell or return within eight days. In other words, they delivered the horse to the guys and they said that it would be a sale unless you return it within eight days. In other words, they gave him eight days to test and try the horse and within those days, if he returns it, then they'll give them back their money or the sale will be deemed not to have taken place. Now, the law says that in such a case of sale or return, property does not pass until the eight days have lapsed. Now, in this case, the horse died on the third day without any fault of the buyer, okay? So the question was, was the, who was supposed to bear the loss? The horse has died, but meanwhile, money was probably exchanged. What did court say? Court said that the seller was to bear the loss because the horse was still his property when it perished. In other words, the sale or return period had not come to an end. So property in the horse had not yet passed to the buyer. So the question of who bears loss or who has property, where there is an approval or sale or return, the law says that property does not pass until the period of approval or the period of sale or return expires. So what we've covered so far is the passing of property for specific goods. Goods that have been specific or specified. They are specific but maybe certain things need to be done to them. That is what we've covered. But there are some times when goods are unspecific. For example, if I'm going to say that I'm going to sell, to, there's a room full of maize, okay? Let's assume one of the rooms in Boobs is full of maize. And I tell you that I'm going to sell to you kilo, two kilograms of that maize in the room X. Those are unspecific goods. Those are unascertained goods. In other words, the two kilos have not yet been identified and earmarked. The law says that property in those goods property in those goods does not pass until those goods are earmarked and ascertained until the two kilograms have been cut off or identified clearly or weighed out and put aside that's when the property passes so when we meet, when you talk about unascertained goods what are we saying we're talking about goods that have not been earmarked they've not been set apart property in those goods does not pass until after they have been earmarked or identified or set apart this principle is also the same with respect to future goods, goods that are going to be pro, um, that are going to be produced in the future tomorrow. We could enter a contract today that you're going to sell to me five kilograms of, of maize, and the production process is going to start today. Those are future goods; they have not yet been produced. The law says that property in those goods does not pass until it, they are produced. In other words, those goods are deemed to be future goods or unascertained goods. And transfer of property in those goods does not pass until those goods are either produced or they are earmarked and ascertained. So the process of ascertainment or earmarking or identifying really concerns setting apart the goods that are either set apart or they are weighed or they are measured or they are counted. Whatever it is that needs to be to, to make those goods clearly identified. That's what the word ascertainment means. So property in unascertained good or unspecific goods or goods that have not been earmarked does not pass until they have been clearly set apart for the contract. So this is the last slide for this topic, passing property. And we've said before that property passes with risk. The whole point we are studying about passing property is because we want to establish who bears the risk when there is loss that is happening. Is it the buyer? Is it the seller? Who is the, who has the right to sue? Is it the buyer? Is it the seller? So the person who has the right to sue, the person who has the, who bears the risk, is the person who has property. If property has passed from the seller to the buyer, then that means risk has passed from the seller to the buyer. So whoever has the property has the risk, and the person who has the risk is the person to bear the loss in the event of damage. That's why we say that if goods are the buyer's risk, the buyer is responsible to bear the loss and the damage. If goods are still at the seller's risk, then it's a seller who's responsible to pay for the damage. Now, Section 8 says that if damage happens before the goods move to the, before legal ownership moves to the buyer, and it's no fault of the seller or the buyer, then that contract will just be void because no one is responsible for the damage and goods had not yet passed. But generally speaking, the person who has the risk is the person who bears the loss. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you're able to understand these slides. And if you have any questions, please raise them during our class time. Or you can raise them by sending me an email. Or you can raise them 
by com making a comment to this YouTube video and I'll be able to respond so that you understand the subject better. I want you to remember that passing of risk is one of the passing of risk and passing of property are the foundations of sale of goods law because whoever has property is the person who has the right to the goods, is the person who has the legal ownership of the goods and therefore that's the person who has the right to sue on those goods. Thank you for watching.